SpaceX's Boca Chica launch site, once a quiet stretch of Texas coastline, has become a proving ground for the most ambitious rocket ever built, Starship. Since its early days of flame and steel, the Starship program has pushed boundaries, both technical and regulatory. It's a rocket that, if successful, could revolutionize space access, support NASA's return to the moon, and one day send humans to Mars. But behind every high-profile test launch, there's a complex dance with regulators, agencies, and environmental watchdogs. The Federal Aviation Administration, an agency more commonly associated with commercial air travel than spaceflight, has emerged as one of the most influential players in determining the pace of Starship's development. And for good reason. Each test flight of Starship carries significant risk. Failures have already disrupted commercial air traffic and scattered debris across international territory. As the stakes rise, so too does the scrutiny. Given Starship's central role in NASA's Artemis missions and SpaceX's broader goals, something pivotal is now happening. After months of investigations, environmental assessments, and interagency reviews, the FAA has approved the launch license for Starship Flight 9. In this video, we'll explain why this approval is so significant, what conditions SpaceX must meet, and how it affects the future of space exploration. But before we go further, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss our in-depth coverage of the space industry. The FAA's final green light for Flight 9 came in two parts. On May 15, 2025, the agency approved license modifications expanding SpaceX's permissible operations at Starbase. A week later, on May 22, the FAA issued a formal return to flight determination. This meant SpaceX had satisfied all safety requirements stemming from previous mishaps, specifically the upper stage failure during Flight 8. Flight 9 is more than just a continuation of testing. It marks the first time a super heavy booster, Booster 14, is being reflown. This booster was previously caught by Starbase's launch tower arms during Flight 7 and is now being reused with Ship 35 for Flight 9. While SpaceX won't attempt a tower catch this time, the reflight alone is a major step toward achieving full reusability. The FAA license for Flight 9 is noticeably more restrictive than earlier approvals. SpaceX is not permitted to recover the booster with tower arms on this flight. Instead, it will ditch into the Gulf of Mexico. This change helps reduce risk during an already complex test and avoids potential damage to ground infrastructure. Hazard zones for Flight 9 have also been dramatically expanded. The aircraft hazard area has nearly doubled in range, stretching about 1,600 nautical miles from Boca Chica. Airspace closures now extend over the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos, and maritime exclusion zones have been adjusted accordingly. These changes reflect new risk estimates based on the reuse of a booster and the prior failures of Flights 7 and 8. Environmental compliance is another critical component. SpaceX is now bound to multiple mitigation measures, including lighting restrictions, beach access controls, and wildlife monitoring. The FAA's license incorporates findings from a new tiered environmental assessment, which concluded that up to 25 Starship launches per year from Starbase would not cause significant environmental harm, provided all safeguards are in place. Importantly, the FAA is requiring SpaceX to maintain $500 million in third-party liability insurance. This ensures that if debris damages property or endangers the public, compensation will be available. Additionally, SpaceX must coordinate in real time with the FAA and other agencies during the launch. Any deviation from the plan, such as debris falling outside expected zones, triggers mandatory response protocols. The process leading up to this approval was long and contentious. Flight 8's explosion in March 2025 prompted a mishap investigation. Rather than waiting to formally close the case, the FAA issued a proactive return-to-flight decision after reviewing SpaceX's submitted report on May 14th. This decision model mirrors the approach taken for Flight 8 when Flight 7's investigation was still open. Environmental concerns added further delays. 
After Flight 6 caused extensive ground damage in April 2023, environmental groups sued the FAA, arguing that the agency had not adequately assessed Starship's impact. This lawsuit remains ongoing. As a result, the FAA conducted updated reviews in late 2023 and throughout 2024. The final environmental assessment in April 2025 enabled the license expansion, but only under strict mitigation measures. The FAA also had to manage international coordination. After debris from earlier flights landed in Turks and Caicos, UK officials pressed for greater oversight. In response, the FAA expanded hazard zones and now collaborates with aviation authorities in the UK, Bahamas, Mexico, Cuba, and the Caribbean. Internally, SpaceX had to prepare Ship 35 and Booster 14 for launch readiness. This included engine tests, static fires, and hardware inspections. Elon Musk originally targeted a Flight 9 launch in early May, but delays in FAA reviews pushed the schedule back. FAA officials defended the timeline, stating that safety and compliance, not deadlines, would determine when the license was granted. The significance of this approval cannot be overstated. For SpaceX, it clears the regulatory bottleneck that had stalled test flights since March. With a license allowing up to 25 launches annually from Boca Chica, SpaceX can now increase its testing cadence substantially. This aligns with the company's development philosophy. Test, fail, fix, fly again. From a safety standpoint, the FAA's approval confirms that SpaceX's corrective actions have passed regulatory scrutiny. Engineering fixes implemented after Flight 8 were validated, which gives both the FAA and NASA greater confidence in the system's reliability. Flight 9 also represents a pivotal test of reusability. If Booster 14's reflight is successful, it will support SpaceX's goal of routine hardware reuse. This could eventually lead to quicker launch turnarounds and lower costs, key enablers for ambitious missions like lunar landings and Mars expeditions. NASA is watching closely. Starship is set to land astronauts on the moon for Artemis III. That mission depends on Starship proving its ability to fly reliably, perform in-orbit refueling, and execute precise landings. FAA approval of Flight 9 helps keep that schedule viable by enabling more uncrewed tests in the short term. Looking further ahead, the implications stretch to Mars. Elon Musk's goal of a Martian settlement hinges on rapid, repeated Starship launches. A high flight rate allows testing of long-duration missions, orbital refueling, and high-speed re-entries. The FAA's license not only authorizes these operations, but sets a precedent for managing international coordination and environmental safety for deep space missions. Reactions to the FAA's decision have been mixed. Environmental advocates remain critical arguing that the FAA's assessments understate the true impact of frequent launches. Groups like the South Texas Environmental Justice Network continue to push for a full environmental impact statement. Meanwhile, many in the local community welcome the economic benefits and global attention that SpaceX brings to South Texas, though concerns about noise, beach closures, and safety persist. Industry experts generally support the FAA's move. They view it as a necessary step that enables progress while balancing public risk. The FAA's stricter oversight, larger hazard zones, insurance requirements, and real-time coordination demonstrates that the agency is adapting to the scale and complexity of Starship. Flight 9's approval also sets up future launches from Florida. SpaceX aims to operate Starship from Kennedy Space Center beginning as early as late 2025. The FAA's confidence in approving Flight 9 may streamline the path for those operations once Florida's environmental reviews conclude. Ultimately, the FAA's green light for Starship Flight 9 marks a turning point. It signals that regulatory barriers are being addressed, safety concerns are being mitigated, and the roadmap to operational Starship missions is starting to take shape. The coming months will be critical. If Flight 9 flies successfully and avoids the failures of its predecessors, it will validate the entire review process and give SpaceX momentum heading into even more complex missions.
Whether launching lunar landers, Starlink payloads, or future Mars vehicles, the groundwork laid by the FAA and SpaceX on this flight will be foundational. As SpaceX prepares for Flight 9, all eyes are once again on Starbase. The countdown isn't just for a rocket. It's for the next phase in human spaceflight. And if everything goes to plan, Flight 9 could be the moment Starship begins to fulfill its promise. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.